Good evening. Thanks for watching Turner Classic Movies. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Ahead tonight, they're armed, they're dangerous, they're looking for trouble, and they're all women. Feels like there should be a sound effect there. Tonight's lineup, three action-packed films we're calling Girls with Guns. We're nothing if not clever. We begin with a film noir right up Eddie Muller's alley from 1950, Gun Crazy. First, I'm going to quote Eddie, my fellow TCM host, when he introduced Gun Crazy on Noir Alley in June of 1917. Every week I bring you representative examples of film noir, he began, but today I'm presenting a film so singular, so weirdly ahead of its time, that it really isn't representative of anything, other than how unexpected and extraordinary a film can be when it's produced outside the mainstream and under the industry's radar. To get you even more amped for gun crazy, Eddie said it was largely ignored when released, but is now recognized as one of the most dynamic and subversive films of its day. The stars here are Peggy Cummins and John Dahl. She's Annie Laurie. He's Bart. Together, they're trouble. Man, you ever get drawn into this story, and it's a propulsive one, too, directed by Joseph H. Lewis, checking in at just 87 minutes. If anything, you'll wish it were longer. Lewis was a really good low-budget director. His other credits include My Name is Julia Ross and So Dark the Night. His last movie has one of the great titles of any Western, Terror in a Texas Town. Gun Crazy is an adaptation of a story by McKinley Cantor, better known for writing the novel The Best Years of Our Lives. Gun Crazy was produced by the King brothers, Frank and Maurice, who produced B-movies and produced them well. They always made money. Frank King, like any good producer, knew how to exploit the market. He was sort of the Billy Bean of post-war Hollywood. When Dalton Trumbo, the great screenwriter, was convicted of contempt of Congress, sentenced to prison as one of the Hollywood Ten and facing a blacklist that would end his career, King hired him off the books, of course, using a front to adapt gun crazy. So you've got Cantor's novel, Trumbo's screenplay, Lewis directing, and you've got Peggy Cummins as the gun crazy girl. The Kings were set to cast Veronica Lake, but her issues with alcohol made her a risky bet the Kings couldn't make. So they turned to Cummings, who turns this into, again, in Eddie's words, one of the most dynamic and subversive films of its day. From 1950, also with Russ Tamblin billed as Rusty, playing John Dahl's character as a teenager, this is Gun Crazy. There is some amazing camera work from cinematographer Russell Harlan in Gun Crazy, but one scene stands out. The long, unbroken take filmed from the backseat of a car as the lovers execute a bank robbery and make a tense getaway. According to director Joseph H. Lewis, the crew pulled it off without closing down the street or warning pedestrians what was going on. I wanted to do it with one shot, said Lewis, because I knew it would make it more exciting and more authentic that way. The scene was originally scripted as a conventionally shot bank robbery, filmed over five days. Lewis restructured it as that one long take, convincing producers that he and Harlan could do it in one day and save them money. Up next, Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon in a crime picture, a road trip movie, and ultimately a groundbreaking feminist film.